we've been discussing this arena game and I wanted to talk a little bit about that separation of the game from the graphical user interface again. This is a diagram uh, done in UML or what's called unified modeling language. This is used for software design and a bunch of other things and this draw.io um, extension or application for Google Drive is a pretty sweet way to to draw these things. It has a, a set of UML stuff. This is also the place that I did that flow chart uh, for the game logic that we talked about earlier. So in the other video um, I explained how you can create your arena game class that extends the JFrame and then this is where the main method will be which actually I didn't list here. Um, so let me just show you how the UML works. Each of these big boxes here is a class and you can have one of each of these things or you can have more than one. That's there's It, it doesn't really matter. Um, the top part, uh, so it's divided into three parts. There's the the title area I guess. The middle part then is a list of all of the fields all of the values or, or pointers that are being stored um, inside of every object that's created of this game. And then the lower part, the third section, is a list of all of the methods. Uh, sometimes we call these attributes up here and behaviors down here. Um, and so there's the game which has the level, the player HP, the monster HP and so on. And it has a bunch of methods like prepare level um, and player attack and all these things. Over here, here's the graphical user interface, which you can see there's a special kind of arrow that extends JPanel. And so this is an, a JPanel plus, you know, JPanel with some other stuff in it. The attributes or the uh, fields here, uh, we have a text area, we have a couple labels. You can see these are all graphical items that are stored um, by the graphical user interface. And if you decided as a designer, hey, you know what, this label isn't working for me, I want to use a different kind of um, user interface component, you can just switch that out and the game doesn't really care because all of that stuff is happening on this side. Here we have some methods too. The action, the attack button action performed, which is what's, um, that method is run when somebody clicks on the attack button. This is not something that the arena game calls directly. It's something that uh, the graphical user interface looks after all on its own. There is one method here, two methods, I guess, the last two that are called by the game. One is update all that says, hey, GUI, some things have changed in the game and you need to update the statistics or the, the numbers that are listed on the screen. And the last one um, in the implementation that I was talking about, there's a message uh, method. So uh, here is a message for the user, please pass this along, graphical user interface. And then in, in my implementation that, that happens in a JText area. So this is one way to help you see kind of who does what. This is what the game is responsible for, this is what the GUI is responsible for, and this arrow in here shows an association between these two. There is one arena game and one arena GUI, that's what the two ones are for. One here, so one game and one GUI. And the two-way arrow means that each can see the other. And I didn't list it here, but I should. Let me just put this in here right now. The Arena GUI has a constructor which um, takes an Arena game as a parameter, remember, so that it can point back to the original Arena game. And then up here also, I have an Arena game. Uh, that is being stored and I'm, I've called it game. So you can see that the name of the variable and the name of the field goes at the beginning and then there's a colon and then the uh, the type of um, the type of variable that this is the type of field and in this case it's an arena game so that's the sort of the pointer back to to this object. Now just to be really clear this is a, a, a description of the class and so in other cases you do have more than one sort of copy of each of these things in the uh, actual running of the application just like you may have more than one J panel or more than one J button. Okay so that's one way to implement this. Now another way to do this slightly different. Uh, let me just back up for one second. You see here how the game is sort of keeping track of a bunch of statistics? That's not awesome because what if uh, somebody suggested, well, you could have more than one monster at a time. And so, you know, you're going to end up with, well, if I have more than one monster, I need maybe an array of monster health uh, hit points or, or some other things that you need to keep track of. Maybe some attributes of the player, like uh, what level the player is on, or if they have some sort of strength, or if they have a weapon, or all of these other things that you could add to, to make the game more complex and more interesting. Every time you do that you're complicating the game class and instead it might be a good idea to separate out 
these other two things. So a couple of small changes. You can see there's some changes in the fields here and I'll update those ones later. Here is a player object or a player class. What is a player? A player has a maximum set of hit points. It has the, their current hit points. So maybe the top value will be 100 and their current hit points is 75. They have one potion left and maybe some other attributes like uh, what level they're on or their strength or their how well they dodge attacks by monsters or how lucky they are, things like that. And then a whole bunch of methods or, uh, or behaviors that we can use to um, to manipulate the player. And similarly, monster will have the same kinds of things. In the implementation we've talked about, there isn't uh, monsters don't use potions, and so I've left off the potions item uh, in the list of attributes or the list of fields. But down here, uh, you can see I'll talk about the constructor in a minute. But you can see things like get max HP, which returns there's the colon returns an int value. That's necessary for um, the game and possibly the GUI, but definitely the game. The game has a reference to the player that, um, let's say they want to, you want to heal the, the player, you could um, get, you know, ask the player object, hey, what's the maximum HP of the player? And uh, when the player uses a potion, you may apply up to a certain amount of extra hit points, only up to the maximum though. Uh, there's lots of ways to implement that. So further down here, uh, let's look through some of these other methods. Get the current HP. That's actually necessary for the GUI. The GUI has to know what is the player's current health because when update all is uh, run, when that method is executed, it goes and looks at the player object and says, hey, what's the current hit points for the player? Oh, it's uh, 32. I'm going to display that on the screen. Similarly, the number of potions that are available. The game would be need to be able to set the maximum HP for example, let's say the player leveled up and now has 110 as the maximum HP. You call, you know, the player dot set max HP, and in brackets of the value 110. Same with set current HP, or maybe these other methods I thought of. You could decrease HP or increase HP by a certain amount instead of just setting the current HP. You could just change it by a certain amount. Similarly, the monsters. If a monster is hit, you might call decrease hit points, but maybe you don't need an increase hit points if there is no way for a monster to heal. So putting all of this stuff down here lets the game class focus on the logic of running the game without worrying about how those values are being stored for the player or for the monster. It also allows you to have more than one monster if you want to. Somebody had asked about that. What if you have more than one? So you have at least one, but up to, put a little star or an asterisk, any number. And then I'll do that right here. Oops, I missed my one. There we go. One up to star any number. So maybe there's some larger number of monsters available, a party of monsters that are being that are attacking. One other possibility is instead of having a player class and a monster class, you could combine these into an actor class or something like that. One of the the characters in the story or in the game and the special kind of character that is the hero, the player character, um, will sometimes have a potion value that is larger than zero where the monster characters would never have that happen. They have the um, attribute listed in their in their list of fields but that class doesn't actually, con uh, would never actually have a, a potion value of more than zero. I just wanted to mention quickly the constructor. You see there's a difference here. The constructor for a player takes two ints. The constructor for a monster takes one int. That's because a monster only, the, the integer value there that's listed is the maximum HP. Create a new monster with maximum HP uh, 50. Or create a new player with maximum HP 100 and how many potions does the player have and that's what the second int value is for. If you combine these into a single class then the, when you want to create a monster you would put in the value for the hit points and then zero for the potions. Unless of course you want your monsters to have potions and I guess that's fine too. So d drawing a diagram like this to separate out the components is really useful for getting the logic down and getting the who does what down. It also makes it pretty awesome for um, multiple developers who are working on the same project. If you describe your design using unified modeling language like this, or very similarly to this, this is slightly different than real UML, um, 
if you describe your design like this, then you can send one programmer off to write the game logic and another to write the GUI and a third one to write these other two classes. And they all know what's called the interface or how this works. They know that they can call max, get max HP on any monster object from the GUI or from the game. And that's enough. They don't really care. That programmer doesn't care how you decide to store your information. You could store it in some kind of crazy array, or you can do these separate individual methods or uh, fields, or you, whatever you want. They're fine as long as they have these methods here that they can access, or the fields that you've listed here that, that they can access. Anyway, that's how you can separate this game out uh, in a couple of different ways. It's entirely up to you. This has some advantages. This is slightly simpler if the game is going to stay simple. But uh, as we talk in the uh, online course, it sounds like people are interested in having uh, a little bit more complexity or at least room for more complexity later. One other thing, I guess, before I sign off here, um, the player and the monster these other attributes that they could have, one of those might be an image. Um, several people have mentioned wanting to have an image for to represent the player or the monster in the graphical user interface. That can be something that's stored as a field right here, a, a pointer to a, an image object. And, uh, and then each player or each monster object that's created can have its own image. So separating it out like this is pretty nice. If you leave things, kind of everything stored in this game class, it gets pretty hard to manage and difficult if you have more than one monster. All right, that's lots. Thanks.